So now that you know a little bit about the program, I will go ahead and show the video. That was their final project. And just as a little um, background to that, like I said, the students choose a topic based on community issues. So this was, again, this program was doing from August to November. So, you know, that was during the whole political season and the whole uh, Trump and everything going on. And what they were hearing on the news, that was a community issue to them, race. Donald Trump building a wall, that mattered to them. And a lot of times um, our youth don't get an opportunity to really express what they really, really think about that. And so that topic was important enough for them to write about it. They've also been discriminated against because they're black. And so that was the premise of their song, which is why their faces were painted different colors to say, don't judge me because of my skin color. I could be green, purple, blue, whatever. First thing I, I want to say, I want to commend you on what's taking place. That's oh, the thank first you. Thing. And um, I, I've been a teacher, and I I know for a fact that students embrace the arts mm -hmm. in connection with learning. And I see, as I listen, there's a there's an educational component, and there's also an expression component, and there's other components. What strikes me is that, you know, as much as people talk about the content of hip hop, there's a wide range of content. And there was nothing in their content that was out of context or inappropriate. And 
it is important to notice what they chose as their subject matter. Don't judge me. Now, I'm 53 years old, and my parents grew up right here in Delaware, and they were subject to every form of racism that exists. And they were civil rights fighters, and Martin Luther King and others gave their life, and people here fought for my generation not to have to say, don't judge me, black lives matter justice, mm -hmm. right? Well, my generation has been subject to that foolishness. And what hurts me, I've been the head of the NAACP here in Delaware for four years and the regional chair for this whole Northeast region. And what hurts me is that these kids, out of all the subject matters that they could have chosen, the foot on their neck, as Julius Cephas said, is don't judge me. Because as young as they are, they know that it's not a fair game because of the racism. And they shouldn't, that shouldn't be something that they're still being subject to. I've gone to college, obtained six or some degrees. And I'm on a city council where don't judge me even applies to me. I have some white colleagues that's against me breathing air because a black man ain't supposed to know nothing or be able to do nothing. But there's also black people that put their necks, put their foot on black people's necks. And that's part of don't judge me. So it's a doggone shame that in a city of Wilmington, that those kids feel that way, but they're telling the truth. But everybody wants to, wants to ignore the truth and not address that issue. So if you talk about race, right, which they're talking about, there's a bunch of people who want to censor them. Don't talk about that. We don't want to deal with that. Why are you starting up trouble? The reason why race has to be discussed is because at that age, they're expressing the foot on their neck. And we need to stop being fake out people in the older ages. Because if we keep being fake out people, not addressing it, then their children are going to be singing the same doggone song. So when is it going to stop? I thank those children. I'm going to probably play their video on, on my television show. Mm -hmm. But they shouldn't even have to have that fault. And it's our fault as the older people. Allowing his folks. Okay, so as far as that topic goes, that's all I have to say. In the later shows, I may review or show my remarks. I haven't decided, but everything right there is my conclusive evidence that there's nothing that was said on there for anybody to have folks trying to say you can't say that. Yes, I can say that. It's called First Amendment freedom of speech, which you don't lose by being an elected official. And those are part of my remarks in connection with what was presented to us and I'm kind of happy to get a chance to show this to you because when you're not watching, I'm rumbling for fairness and justice and it offends me. Now my question is, why isn't Hanifa Shabazz saying what I said? Why isn't she saying what I said? because she's not free to say what I said. And she's leading other people to not be free. So I have that phone number up there in case anybody wanted to comment on the evidence that they just saw. 
before I move to the next topic. I said I'm going to open up the phone lines in case there's anybody who wants to comment on what I said. So with that being the case, I don't see the phone ringing. The last person in city government that was a council person that was attacked the way I was was City Councilman Keeley. That's Helene Keeley's father. According to what the media presented, he had committed some crime. And so they had a problem with his behavior. Now since then, Kevin Kelly has called Hadifa all kinds of names back in the day and called Jim Seals all kinds of names. If you don't believe me, go ask Mouse, who used to be the head of the NAACP. Go ask him about what he observed. And if the videotapes still exist, maybe Mouse can direct you to the videotapes back when redistricting was taking place. But Hanifa Shabazz wouldn't dare throw a rock at Kevin Kelly, but she'll throw a rock at Sam Guy. Very interesting, isn't it? Okay, so now we're going to switch to the next topic. Okay, let me pick up this call. Hello? Yes, is it a call-in? Yes. All right, I'll wait. The call-in is for purposes of those two videos where you saw exactly what I said. What do you have to say about it? Oh, you only want me to speak on the videos. Well, that's the focus of this segment. I got you. No problem. What I want to say about the videos is the kids are on point, you are on point, and it's a sad commentary to be up against what you are up against, but I'm going to keep you in prayer. I'm so grateful that you are on city council. I'm so grateful. I already knew, but to have you there to expose some of the behaviors that are taking place, and especially by some of our black leaders, I am beyond offended. I am appalled and upset. Like you said, sometimes our people, meaning the race, uh, will pretend to be uh, a part of the uh, cleanup or a part of the... Uh, the uh, successfulness in our uh, race and community. But like you said, some of them are bought. And everything that you say is so clear to me, and I can't understand why some people just can't see it. It is a disgrace. Keep doing what you're doing. You'll be in my prayers. I know you're fighting a long battle, but it's a reason for everything. And I can't wait until everything just comes to a head and open up because the council is silent in so many areas, but they're still doing things in so many areas. It's a big difference now with you there. And uh, all I can say is, again, you're in my prayers. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is going to continue. At 3 o'clock will be the second show, and at 9 o'clock the third show. I'm going to bring people things to see and observe. I don't have to say nothing. Play the tape. So thank you for calling in. Thank you. Okay, so let's move to the next topic. Um, do we need to take a break to switch over to those uh, documents that are on that board, or can we keep going? Okay, let's go to the board. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some things. So you're gonna he you won't see me. You're going to hear me talking about these documents. So, as you look at this document, can you scroll up to the top just a little bit? Because I want everybody to see this. I want you to understand this story. Okay, so I'm going to give you some information about this document. Okay, I want you to first notice that this document is dated January the 24th. So that's a while back. Now this is what I want everybody to listen to. When all of the new council members came into council, 
one of the biggest issues that a lot of people asked about was what money do we have? What money do we get? Okay, now, I'm telling you about things prior to January 24th. So everybody kept asking about the money and folks wouldn't respond. You can put it back at that top, at the top, yes. We weren't getting answers about the money. Now, we know about a lot of things that go on that people think we don't know in this community and in City Hall. So when you keep asking about the money and people won't tell you about the money, then that causes suspicion in and of itself. Because at any moment, there's a document that has a summary related to the money. So when we asked way before we were even sworn in about the money, there's this cloud of secrecy. So here's what happened. And again, this is all prior to January the 24th. So we're asking about the money. Then we get sworn in. We're still asking about the money. Finally, around January 24th, Hanifa Shabazz and Michelle Bass Knight and Bud Friel and all of them that control all the money, they sent each member of council a separate communication that was designed to tell each person how much money they have. Now, Sam Guy is a lawyer who also has a master's in instructional technology. So I'm not an IT expert, but I got a good grasp of data, analysis, Excel spreadsheets, etc. So when somebody gives me, when I know there's at least 13 columns of data that's maintained and it's almost always maintained in a spreadsheet, and somebody only gives me one column that they tell me has the information for me, it's my natural reaction given that for a month you wouldn't give any information, but now you only want to give me a sliver of information that doesn't allow me to see the whole picture. So any under normal circumstances, given that the whole money belongs to city council as an organization that's divvied up, that when folks ask to see about the money, it's only natural that folks would send you the entire spreadsheet so that you can see about your money and everybody else's money. That's what openness and transparency is. But see, when people aren't open in transparency, again, it breeds suspicion. So now, here comes January 24th. So now, each person gets a letter. So I want you to see what Michelle Bass Knight sent me. Now, I want you to understand that Michelle Bass Knight is one of the staff people who Bud Friel has total control over everything she does for him. And with Hanifa, she handles the money that Hanifa kind of tries to control and act like it's all her money, which it's not. And so Michelle Bass Knight also works for all of us. So it's, she has to, in a sense, be straight with everybody. So here's the letter that she sent me. So Michelle Bass Knight directly sends this communication to me. Now, as you read this, okay, and it's specifically to me, the first question is, based on that letter right there, how much money does Sam Guy have? 
when you read that letter. It tells you all about background, etc., what the money has to be spent for, but nowhere on that page does it tell how much money I have. Now, that was the whole purpose of all of the questioning. So now, given that that's not on that cover sheet, I want you to understand something. Each council person at the bottom gets 10000 and at the bottom, they're just making a note that Mayor Williams provided an additional 15000 and that's why the total funding is 25000 So that would make you think somebody's trying to commu communicate to me that there's some money for me. So now, attached to this letter, I'm going to show you the next document that was an attachment to this letter. So let's go to the second document. So they're setting up the second document. So now, I want you to scroll down a little bit. Keep going down. Keep going. So these are places where the money was spent, but this has nothing to do with me whatsoever. So now let's go over to the right. Keep coming down over to the right. Here's what matters to me. Right there, hold up. The yellow part. No, no, no. Back it up. All the yellow. There we go. Now here's what, basically, I opened it up. So instead of telling me there's no money for me, there's all this information, but at the end of the day, they're telling me that when it comes to scholarship funds, I get zero dollars. And when it comes to discretionary funds, I get zero dollars. Now, what they shared me with me was Justin Wright's accounting of the 10000 he had plus the extra twenty five, fifteen thousand, I guess, that the mayor gave him. All of that has nothing to do with me whatsoever. The only thing that matters for me is on January 4th, what amount of money was Sam Guy going to receive for scholarships and discretionary funds because there's children who want scholarships. And when I was on council before, people always would write to me for scholarships. And I got to give people scholarships that needed help going to college. Now. This letter says, Sam Guy, you get no money. And what this letter implies is Justin spent all of his money, and so you don't get any money. But me getting money has nothing to do with Justin in particular because there's three councilmen at large. There's Justin Wright, you had Maria Cabrera, and you had... Uh, Mike Brown. Those were the three council people at large that left. Loretta Walsh, as a council person at large, was still there. So what I say to myself is, since they didn't give me the whole chart so that I can see what was left by Councilman Brown and what was left by Councilwoman Cabrera, because those three people, whatever they left in combination, should be what I get a third of. But you're just thinking, figuring people are letting you know there's no at-large money. That's what this means. So the effort is to mislead you into thinking, ah, oh, there's no at-large money. But I didn't, my mom and dad didn't encourage me to go to college for nothing. So when I see this, but I don't have the whole chart, I'm saying, well, okay, they spent up all the money, and I guess all the at-large people spent all the money, but where's the whole chart? So for two months, I asked for the whole chart. They, they don't give me the chart. I keep asking for the chart, 
They don't give the chart. So now fast forward on March 24th. See, the week before March 24th, we had some meetings related to the budget. And I start talking about some of the information related to budgetary items that hadn't been provided to me that may impact how I view this budget. So then all of a sudden, folks want to reach and get you this information that they haven't given you for over a month and a half. So now I'm going to show you what I was given on approximately March 24th, which is the whole picture. So let's go to the next chart. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Can you, don't move it. I want you to kind of let me see a little bit more. Uh, zoom, in, zoom out a little bit, just a little. Re stop right there, okay? See at the top where it says remaining as of January 4th? I want everybody to look at Namdi, because he's a councilman who stayed on council. So if you notice, Namdi spent $150 of discretionary money prior to January 4th. So starting on July 1st of 2016 through January 4th, he spent $50 of discretionary funds, $9,800 on scholarships. His remaining balance is $50 as of January 4th. Can you scroll down to the, the scroll down so we can see where Namdi is? Keep going. Stop right there. See where it says Namdi has an available balance of $50? That was as of January 4th. Now scroll over to the right where the five black, three black boxes are. Get all three of them. Stop right there. Look at Maria now. I'm not going to go through all the district council people. Ma Maria Cabrera had $6,500. Her available balance was $4,800. No, her available balance was $6,500. Justin Wright's available balance shows no money left. Mike Brown shows $250 left. If you notice, they gave Maria Cabrera's 6,500 balance to Dixon. They gave Justin Wright's zero balance to me and they gave Mike Brown's zero, $250 to Ciro Poppity, to Ciro Adams. All three of us are the exact same city council members at large. So 6,500 plus zero plus 250 is $6,750. If you divide that by three, each one of us should have received $2,250. Why did I get a letter telling me I get zero? Why did Mike, why did Cyril Adams get 250? And why did Dixon get 6,500? Dixon's part of Hanifa's team. If Dixon didn't know that I got zero, zero and and zero Adams got 250 once she learned it when I gave everybody this chart her comment was she didn't do anything wrong no she did do something wrong she was supposed to be alarmed and give back the portion of this money that she has no business having Hanifa should have fixed this so this is Anybody in America knows that this is wrong. They could have put my name under the 6,500 and put Adams under zero. Whatever you do is wrong unless you split that money evenly up with the three city council people at large who are similarly situated and subject to equal protection under the law. That's wrong. So there's your evidence. I'll take some calls if anybody wants to call. There's the issue staring you right in the face. And once you know you have money that you shouldn't have, 
then you're obligated to stand up for righteousness. Both of them. We're here to wind up. I'll see you from three to four with another topic. I may rewind and show you the summary items, but there's the fact. Take care, Sam Guy, signing out. I'll see you at three o'clock for part two.